Hi there, our highly valued, treasured and esteemed viewers and listeners and welcome back to your channel of choice. This video I am about to present was compiled by Dr. Nath Arawa, a clinical pharmacist by training and profession who is the founder of Progressive Pharmacotherapy Consultants. The premier virtual clinical pharmacy institute for capacity building for healthcare workers. The Virtual Clinical Pharmacy Institute with a difference, where patient safety, medication therapy management and optimal clinical outcomes are very crucial and non-negotiable to us. Here we seek to remain your premier source of crucial tips for high-impact pharmacotherapy services. So, on behalf of the Institute, I humbly urge you all to sit back and spare me part of your very precious time to share with you very useful tips which may prove very, very handy in your line of duty. I now welcome you all to part 275 of our pharmacotherapy series which majors in essential hypertension. The first question refers to patient DTC in part 274 of this pharmacotherapy series. How can antihypertensive drug therapy reduce DTC's risk of hypertension associated complications? Without a doubt, antihypertensive therapy reduces the risk of cardiovascular disease and cardiovascular events in patients with hypertension. Numerous landmark placebo-controlled studies have clearly demonstrated these benefits. The first large-scale trial, published in 1967, was the Veterans Administration versus A study in men with DBP between 115 and 129 mm of mercury. This study was prematurely stopped because benefits of treatment were so dramatic. Antihypertensive therapy significantly reduced cerebral hemorrhage (ME), left ventricular dysfunction, retinopathy, and kidney disease. Other landmark placebo-controlled studies have evaluated antihypertensive therapy in patients with less severe hypertension and have shown a reduced risk of cardiovascular events, stroke, ischemic heart disease, and left ventricular dysfunction, and even cardiovascular death. Placebo-controlled studies evaluating morbidity and mortality in hypertension are now not only unnecessary, but considered unethical because of the well-established benefits of treatment. Even small reductions in BP have been associated with significant cardiovascular benefits. Based on prospective observational studies, a persistent 5 mm of mercury reduction in DBP is associated with a 21% reduction in coronary heart disease and a 34% reduction in stroke. Most antihypertensive drugs reduce left ventricular hypertrophy through varying mechanisms. It is logical that regression of left ventricular hypertrophy is desirable, but this remains unproved. The next question reads, will DTC's early signs of hypertension-associated complications improve or reverse with appropriate BP control? Reductions in BP can reverse many of the changes associated with DTC's retinopathy. Studies have demonstrated that the risk of retinopathy in diabetes increases significantly when BP is elevated and that BP lowering can slow this progression. Although DTC has an elevated fasting glucose, he does not have diabetes. Regardless, lowering BP is desirable for anticipated beneficial effects on his retinopathy. The next question reads, should DTC start antihypertensive drug therapy, or are lifestyle modifications alone sufficient? It is reasonable to assume that lifestyle modifications can partially help DTC achieve his BP goal. DTC has multiple major cardiovascular risk factors and has early evidence of hypertension-associated complications. 
Lifestyle modifications are germane to the appropriate treatment of hypertension, but prospective clinical trials have not proven that this treatment approach prevents cardiovascular disease in patients with hypertension similar to what is proven antihypertensive drug therapy. Hence, initiation of drug therapy should not be delayed unnecessarily, especially for patients with cardiovascular risk factors. The next question reads, which lifestyle modifications can DTC implement to lower his BP? Weight reduction through dietary modifications and physical activity and sodium restriction are the most apparent lifestyle modifications for DTC to lower his BP. A thorough patient interview, that is a diet history to quantify total calories, sodium, fat, and cholesterol, and a social history to determine alcohol consumption and confirm cigarette use, should be obtained. Based on this interview, customized recommendations can be made. The DASH diet should be strongly encouraged in DTC based on proven benefits. DTC's BMI of 30 kg per meter squared or more classifies him as obese. As little as a 5% to 10% loss in weight, 5 to 11 kg will provide global health benefits. Strategies that increase his aerobic activity, in addition to diet, can augment weight loss. The next question reads, aside from treating hypertension, which other cardiovascular risk reduction strategies should be recommended in DTC? Let's talk about smoking cessation. Smoking is an important modifiable major cardiovascular risk factor. Cigarette smoking has been shown to independently increase cardiovascular and overall mortality, and cessation can decrease the incidence of cardiovascular disease. Although smoking does not chronically lower BP, smoking cessation is strongly recommended to improve overall health. Hypertensive smokers should be continually educated about the risks associated with cigarette smoking and directed to behavior modification programs that can assist smoking cessation efforts. Next we will look at low-dose aspirin. Low-dose aspirin therapy, dosed at 81 mg daily, is recommended by the U.S. Preventive Services Task Force, abbreviated as USPSTF, for the primary prevention of MI in certain men 45 to 79 years old and ischemic stroke in certain women 55 to 79 years old. This recommendation is contingent on age and quantitative risk of coronary heart disease in men e.g., the Framingham risk scoring, and ischemic stroke in women. DTC is not yet a candidate for low-dose aspirin based on his age. We will now consider controlling other comorbid diseases. In addition to treating hypertension and lowering BP to goal, controlling other comorbidities, which are themselves associated with increased cardiovascular risk, should be performed. When present, dyslipidemia, diabetes mellitus, obesity, and any other forms of cardiovascular disease should be diligently treated and controlled. DTC has dyslipidemia and requires statin treatment. Individuals without clinical atherosclerotic cardiovascular disease, abbreviated as ASCV, D, or diabetes, who are 40 to 75 years of age with LDL cholesterol 70 to 189 mg per deciliter, and have an estimated 10 year atherosclerotic cardiovascular disease risk of 7.5% or higher. DTC's calculated risk is 9.6%, and his cardiovascular risk would be reduced with better control of this condition. The next question reads, which treatment principles need to be considered when choosing an initial antihypertensive agent for DTC? Selecting an antihypertensive drug is complex. There are numerous choices, and all agents can effectively lower BP. Depending on the dose used, BP reductions are similar. BP reduction, however, is only a surrogate endpoint of therapy and does not necessarily reflect overall effectiveness. 
reducing hypertension associated complications is the ultimate goal of treatment. The next question reads, which antihypertensive agents are appropriate first-line treatments for DTC? The JNC-8 report from 2013 outlines evidence-based pharmacotherapy recommendations accumulated from more than 50 years of clinical trials. Because DTC is black and does not have chronic kidney disease, JNC-8 recommends thiazide-like diuretics or calcium channel blockers as first-choice antihypertensive therapy. This recommendation is based on the propensity of data showing reduced morbidity and mortality with these drug classes. Traditional landmark placebo-controlled hypertension studies e.g., the SHEP Swedish trial of old patients with hypertension and Medical Research Council established that treating hypertension produces significant reductions in cardiovascular events e.g., stroke and MI, and mortality. These traditional landmark trials used thiazide diuretic-based therapy, and thus thiazide diuretics have been the quintessential antihypertensive agent for most patients. Subsequently, several clinical trials evaluating newer agents ACE inhibitors, angiotensin II receptor blockers, and calcium channel blockers have provided additional evidence on cardiovascular event reduction. Most of these trials do not include a placebo group because it is unethical to use placebo in long-term studies, rather, they use an active antihypertensive agent as the comparator often a thiazide diuretic or beta blocker or both. In those studies in which newer antihypertensive agents were compared with thiazide diuretics, very similar effects were seen. One of these studies was the antihypertensive and lipid lowering treatment to prevent heart attack trial, abbreviated as All Hat. In the All Hat, 33,357 patients with hypertension were randomly assigned in double blind manner to thiazide diuretic clothalidone, calcium channel blocker, that is amlodipine, or ACE inhibitor, that is lisinopril based therapy. After a mean follow-up to 4.9 years, the incidence of the primary endpoint of fatal coronary heart disease or non-fatal MI was similar among all three treatment arms. The next question reads, should monotherapy or two-drug therapy be started in DTC as his initial regimen? A monotherapy approach is an option for DTC monotherapy with a calcium channel blocker, or thiazide diuretic as recommended by JNC-8, will likely reduce his BP to less than 140 systolic 90 diastolic. If DTC is not black, ACE inhibitors and angiotensin II receptor blockers would also be optimal alternatives. The next question reads, how should DTC's race influence the selection of an antihypertensive regimen? As monotherapy, it is well documented that a thiazide diuretic or a calcium channel blocker is highly effective in lowering BP in black patients. This is likely because of the profile of low renin coupled with high plasma volume pattern of hypertension that is commonly seen in black patients with hypertension. Conversely, ACE inhibitor, angiotensin II receptor blocker, or beta blocker monotherapy is less effective in lowering BP in blacks compared with white patients. However, when these agents are used in combination, especially with a thiazide diuretic, these race-based differences seen in BP lowering with monotherapy are abolished. This information may aid in selecting one drug option over another in a primary prevention patient, but does not apply to black patients with other comorbidities, in whom choice of therapy follows an evidence-based approach to selection based on the comorbidities. DTC does not have any other comorbidities for specific antihypertensive drug therapy. His first-line treatment option is calcium channel blocker or thiazide diuretic. 
Monotherapy with either a thiazide diuretic or a calcium channel blocker would be very effective in BP lowering either of these two drugs is an acceptable treatment option for him. So there you have it, our highly esteemed viewers and listeners, that brings us to the end of this video. If it benefited you in any way, kindly remember to give it a thumbs up, to like it and to share it widely with your peers. Please leave your comments at the bottom. And if you haven't yet done so, I humbly urge you to subscribe to our YouTube channel. I would like to promise you all that the very, very best is yet to come. Thank you very much for viewing this video. On behalf of our senior colleague, Dr. Nath Arawa, I sincerely appreciate your partnership, continued support and kind collaboration. We look forward to interacting with you in the next video, which will be part 276.